you know, I think it would be to, to you know, to just tell my 16 year old self, just kind of calm the F down and keep doing <laughs> what you're doing and everything's going to be okay. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about what young Alex um, was was like. What re what were you like at sixteen? Well, when I was sixteen, I was um, I was working on Broadway uh, in Peter Pan with Sandy Duncan in New York. So um, I was a high school kid during the day at a regular public high school, and then uh, every single day I would take the bus into the city and do a show that night, um, matinee on Wednesday and four shows on the weekend. Wow. <laughs> so it was kind of an insane schedule. And I did that for, for a couple of years. So um, it was eight shows a week uh, for a few years. Um, uh, so I was, you know, uh, leading a kind of double life. You know, when I got the script for Bill and Ted, I, I thought it was really funny and really sweet. Um, but it was an independent movie. It wasn't a particularly big budget movie. Um, and I didn't expect it to do huge business. Can we go anywhere we want at any time? You can do anything you want. I don't think either of us thought it was ever going to be a, a, a big movie. I think we just thought it was going to be like a movie you would catch on cable like at 2 o'clock in the morning and, and have a laugh about. Put them in the iron meat. Excellent! Execute them! Bogus! You know, when I did Lost Boys, it was a relatively small part, but it was a big Warner Brothers movie and there was a lot of... There was a sense that the film was going to be a hit while we were making it. Don't be scared, Michael! Ah! Bill and Ted was the opposite. We were, like, left alone. We shot in Phoenix and then we went to Italy. Nobody knew we existed. We had a ton of fun. We were just kind of making a movie our own by our own terms. Uh, and so in a way, that was kind of a sweeter victory because uh, we really had no expectations for it. If you guys are really us, what number are we thinking of? 69, dudes! <gasps> I didn't earn a lot of money on Bill and Ted. When I earned money, it was, it was great and it paid for me to make films and to pay my rent and everything. But it wasn't like it changed my life very much. So... Uh, so while I was waiting for that film to come out, I was shooting music videos and doing all kinds of other stuff in it and not really thinking about it. And then suddenly there was this giant hit. Um, so it was very, it was in a way it was kind of jarring because it was suddenly, I had notoriety in a way that I hadn't had before on that scale. So when we made that film, you know, we were two you know, young, kind of scrappy guys from the East Coast, mostly from a theater background. We both rode motorcycles. We both played bass. We became friends while we were making one, and neither of us were famous at that point. So um, it was really like just a friendship of like two scrappy people who'd hit L.A. at the same time, trying to navigate kind of young adulthood on our own. I mean, I formed friendships on that movie that I've had my whole life. That's some good advice then for your for your younger self, maybe to kind of to hold on to those friendships that you make, those strong friendships. Yeah, I think that, and um, I think that, and the the affirmation that while the industry um, and kind of the adult world in general can seem kind of daunting or intimidating, that that you end up forming communities that that last um and that that you end up forming bonds that last and uh and that really does carry you through it's not as isolated as you can as you fear at that age you know that oh my god the big bad world right um you really you know it's, there's a sense of community and you can all kind of move through it together my family my mother's side is all from ukraine so I mean, I, I'm guessing at the moment is a really difficult time. I mean, it's been, it is in terms of it coming to a head. They've been struggling. They've, you know, that, that region has struggled for its entire existence for, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years. Yeah. So uh, my family, you know, left during czarist Russia. So, uh, but a lot of the same persecution that's going on there now was going on there then. Uh, so I, you know, it's just a very sad 
history, uh, but they're as we've, we're seeing, uh, they're pretty fierce people, and they don't give up. I'm very attuned to my ancestry, which is which is very fiercely independent on both sides. You know, the that there's that side, and my dad's side, they were Australian all by way of Scotland. Um, and they, you know, they were Glencoe people, and they were really fierce. And uh, they left um, during the Glencoe uprisings, and and like literally created towns in in Australia, like dragged tractors over mountains. They were very, very tough people <laughs> and very independent. Um, and I, you know, I like that on both sides. I think the thing I've learned about the business now is that, you know, if you don't come from money or you don't come from a family with a lot of connections that will open doors for you automatically, um, it doesn't mean you, you won't get ahead. It just means you have to work really hard and not, and not quit. And, um, and that can, that can seem like advice that, that doesn't work like, oh, well, any, anyone could say that. Right. But it really does seem to work. Most people that I know who have survived in the business and done the things they wanted to do, they honestly, they just work a little bit harder than other people. They just do. Um, there's a lot of people who give up or who, who are, who don't work as hard. And, uh, that really does seem to be the secret sauce for the most part.